introduction to elisa elisa is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay it is a technique used to measure the concentration of antibodies or antigens in a solution by color change the basic principle of an elisa is to use an enzyme to detect an antigen antibody binding this enzyme converts the colorless substrate to a color product indicating the presence of antigen and antibody binding now coming on to the outline as you can see that uh, this is a plate of elisa which is a 96 well plate which is used in the elisa procedure elisa involves a coating of an antigen or a protein to a solid support as a membrane onto this 96 well micro plate antigen from the sample are attached to coated wells an antibody an enzyme and then a substrate is added to the adsorbed antigen principles it the combines it combines the specificity of an antibodies with the sensitivity of simple enzyme assays by using antibodies or antigens coupled to an easily assayed enzyme it involves the uses of an enzyme to detect the binding of an antigen and an antibody the enzyme converts a colorless substrate to a colored product indicating the presence of antigen antigen bo body binding therefore elisa can be used to detect the either the presence of antigen or antibodies in a sample depending on how the test is designed coming on to the steps of elisa number 1 antigen binding the sample antigen is binded or immobilized to microplate via adsorption to the surface binding is achieved by incubating the wells with a solution containing the antigen for 2 hours at uh, room temperature or overnight at 4 degrees centigrade the protein adheres due to the hydrophobic interactions between the protein and the plastic the coating is done using the carbonate bicarbonate buffer at pH of 9.6 step 2 all the unbounded sites of on the solid support are blocked to prevent the non specific binding of the antibodies blocking buffers like bsa non fat dry milk powder in pbs or tbs try buffered saline at ph 7.4 with minute percentage of 2 to 20 are used to block the free site protein in the blocking solution will attach to the membranes in places where the target proteins have not attached excess blocking agent is removed by washing the plate membrane with washing buffer step 3 primary antibody now the primary antibody is added and will be bound only if there is a recognized epitope within the sample antigen now as you can see here this is a primary antibody the secondary antibody an enzyme linked secondary antibody is added with a suitable dilution which will bind to an available one primary antibody that is to bound to the antigen now the secondary antibodies are linked to the enzyme through by conjugation enzymes generally used are horse radish peroxidase hrp and alkylene phosphatase plate is washed with buffer or a mild detergent to remove any unbound antibodies or proteins washing is a very important step in the elisa technique now you, this diagram is depicting the whole procedure here as you can see this is an immobilized antigen or antibody now this is a primary antibody if this is an antigen then the primary antibody is added then secondary antibody which is a labeled with enzyme is added to it lastly the substrate is added which will create a reaction detection after the final wash step the plate is developed by adding an enzymatic chromogenic substrate to give color the entire plate is placed into a plate reader and the optical density is determined for each well intensity of color reflects the amount of specific secondary antibody bound to the target a spectrophotometer is designed to read each well in the 96 well plate it is interfaced with computer for data management substrate used are pnpp para nitrophenyl phosphate bcip bromo chloro indole phosphate nbt is nitro blue tetrazoleum tnb is tetra methyl benzidine dab is 3 di 3 dash di amino benzidine 
here you can see the diagram of the ELISA procedure. Now the plate in which this, these are coated wells with different anti immobilized antigens. The primary antibody is added, which will come and to attach to this according to their uh, substrate and uh, site specificity. Then after this, the washing has been done. The washing procedure is done. Then labeled secondary antibody is added. And this is a labeled antibody with the enzyme. And again, then washing is being done. This is a general protocol of an ELISA. Then substrate addition, as you can see, this is a substrate which is added, which will convert the whole colorless process into a colored project, a colored uh, solution, as you see here. You can see here, all these, these are the wells which are being converted into colored solution. See, so the substrate and enzyme interaction create a color change for detection. This color is being read, read by a spectrum photometer present in the ELISA reader. Coming on to types of the ELISA. There are three types of ELISA present. That is direct ELISA where only the primary antibody is used. Indirect ELISA where primary antibody is used and then detected by secondary antibody which is a labeled one. Sandwich ELISA, a capture antibody is used and bound to a solid surface. A solution containing the antigen is added followed by the washing. Coming on to direct ELISA. Direct ELISA apply a sample of known antigen to a surface. The enzyme linked primary antibody is applied to the plate. Washed. After washing, only antigen antibody complexes remain attached. Then the substrate is added, added, which is converted by enzyme to elicitate the chromogenic signal. Sandwich ELISA. A plate is coated with suitable antibody. Buffer is added. Sample is added to a plate, so antigen is bounded by capture antibody. Suitable biotin labeled detection antibody is added to plate. Enzyme horse radix peroxidase is added and binds the biotin labeled detection antibody. The TMB substrate is added and converted by HRPO to a colored product. Now, as you can see here in this diagrammatic representation, this is a capture antibody which is used where again next, next antigen is used here added. Then biotin labeled detection antibody is added in the step 3. Step 4 contains the HRPO horse radix peroxidase enzyme. After that the step 5 the TMB substrate is added. As soon as the substrate is added this colorless solution is being turned into color product. Uh, here it is a sandwich. Eliza, in which the, the, the antigen which we are going to uh, detect is being sandwiched between two antibodies. Competitive ELISA. In this type of ELISA, the solid phase is coated with the antibody. As an unknown amount of unlabeled antigen and the known amount of labeled antigen is being added. The free and labeled antigens are captured. The colored formation by oxidation of substrate into a colored product. Here also the same thing is happening. But here the competition is there between two types of uh, these antigens. Plate which is pre-coated with an antigen to which antigen or antibody complex is added. The more antigen in the sample, the fewer antibodies will be able to bind to antigens in the well. Hence, it is competition. After washing, the unbound antigen and antibody complex is removed. The secondary antibody that is specific to primary antibody and conjugated with an enzyme is added followed by addition of a substrate. For competitive ELISA, the higher the sample antigen concentration, the weaker is the eventual signal. The major advantages of, of this type of ELISA is the ability to use crude or impure samples and still selectively binary antigen that may be present. Indirect ELISA, antigen is added to a plate, added buffer is added, suitable primary antibody is added, then secondary antibody with, with HRPO is then added, which recognizes and binds to primary antibody. TMB substrate, substrate is added and is converted to detectable form. 
same here in the in this uh, diagram you can see the difference between direct indirect and the capture elisa now what can be tested using this elisa technique proteins with multiple epitopes can be detected using the sandwich elisa pure form of antigen can be detected using a competitive elisa as purified analyte is immobilized and the other antigen will compete small target molecules which do not adsorb by themselves can be attached to larger protein which provides the mean to attach to desired epitope for detection membrane proteins from the cells can be adsorbed and thus detected by reducing the concentration of the detergent in which these cells are generally maintained applications of elisa firstly detection of hiv antibodies detection of microorganism and toxins produced by them for example salmonella listeria bacillus food allergens it has also been found application in the food ind industry in detecting the potential food allergens like milk peanuts walnuts almonds egg serological blood test for hormone detections can be done elisa can be used as a detection method for the tuberculosis rotavirus hepatitis b markers in serum e coli in feces hiv antibodies in blood samples the hormones which i have told you earlier can be like hcg lh tsh t3 t4 all complete thyroid profiles many more functions can be done by the elisa now the components in which the elisa kit comes it contains a immunosorbent a conjugate a substrate controls sample dilute dilutants and wash solutions and stock solution all these thing, things are pre present in the kit this is diagrammatic representation again to uh, represent the elisa technique the coated wells are here shown the sample is added and if it is containing the uh, antibody and the reaction takes place then antibody will bind to the coated plate if no antibody will present present then there is no binding again if there is binding is been done so uh, again when the enzyme is added further the the antibody present will bind and in this well there is no reaction is been done and after adding the substrate the whole the solution is turned into colored one here as the starting in the starting the antibodies were present results now elisa results are of different types like quantitative elisa can be interpreted in comparison to standard curve in order to precisely calculate the concentration of antigens in various samples qualitative elisa can also be used to achieve yes or no answer indicating whether a particular antigen is present in a sample as compared to blank well containing no antigen or an unrelated control antigen ELISA data is typically graphed with optical density versus log concentration to produce a sigmoidal curve. Known concentration of antigens are used to produce a standard curve and this data is used to measure the concentration of unknown samples by comparison to the linear portion of the standard curve. Now strategies in which, on which this is based. Chromogenic assay means the substrate forms the colored product under the catalysis of enzyme catalyzed which is directly related to the amount of test substrate. the optical density is proportional to the concentration of the analyte to be measured chemi fluorescent assay the enzyme converts the substrate to a reaction product that fluoresces when the when excited by light to a particular wavelength chemi luminescent assay chemi luminescent substance is excited by oxidation and catalysis forming an intermediate when the intermediate return back to the stable ground state the photon is released which is detected by luminescent signal instrument so depending upon which type of elisa it is there they are these are the uh, uh, types of elisas which are present like for chromogenic for chemi fluorescent or for chemi luminescent